here with Jessica Olark and uh, Richard Guerrero, right? <laughs> this is another great video. We're going to talk about uh, circular motion, right? And we're going to talk about this idea of centripetal force. Now, we learned in the past that in order to have an acceleration, uh, the velocity has to change, which means that either the direction, okay, or the magnitude of the speed of the velocity have to change, or both, right? So in this case here, we're going to do uniform circular motion meaning like the speed stays constant, but the direction changes. We're not gonna complicate it where it's like the speed changing as it's turning. So a perfect, a simple example is like if you take a tennis ball and attach it to a string and it just whirling over your head, okay? And if you can, can maintain a constant speed, that's a circular motion, right? Now what's forcing this ball to kind of like stay in a circle? Uh, it's basically the string, right? If it wasn't for the string, if I do this, if I let the ball go right here where my left hand is, it will just go flying toward that wall. There's a wall over there. Okay. So now there are some formulas that we're going to deal with. Maybe I'll show you the proof in another video. Maybe not. Because I'm more interested in like doing the math and understanding this conceptually than proving a formula. Now this is the definition of revolution and rotation. Revolution is when you're turning around something outside of you, meaning like the earth revolves around the sun. Rotation. Uh, is when you're spinning around the internal axis. And we'll do that when we talk about rotation. It's a whole unit on this. And rotation is like the Earth spinning on itself or rotating on itself. The velocity vector is always tangent to the path. We've learned that in the past. At all times, the velocity is always tangent to the path. So if you fire a projectile and it does something like this, at this moment here, you're going tangent to, to this path here. At this moment here, you're going tangent to that path. So you're constantly changing direction. In here, you're changing direction and magnitude. Uh, the net centripetal force is the vector. Okay, so, okay. There is no such thing as a centripetal force. A centripetal force is basically the combination, right? The net of all the forces pointing towards the center and away from the center. So we're gonna to choose towards the center as positive, so it's gonna be anything that's directed towards the center minus anything that's directed away from the center. This will make more sense once we start doing the, uh, the math. We'll look at different examples. Um, all right, so here are the formulas, and I'm gonna to try to just explain the formulas, do a few examples, and that's it. AC, that's the centripetal acceleration equals V squared over R. There is a proof to that. Maybe we'll do it, maybe not. Now, why do we have this centripetal acceleration? Because our velocity is changing direction. Okay? Now, let's see if this actually makes sense. If you go fast, right, there is a greater change in direction because you're moving fast. So your direction is changing quickly. So your acceleration is higher. So we understand the direct relationship between the acceleration and the speed, because you're changing that direction pretty quickly. Now what happens if you make R large? Just imagine, if you make R large, the change happens slowly, the change in direction there is. So there is that inverse relationship. <coughs> okay. Now, what does this, uh, F net C comes from, well, this is Newton's second law. F equals, F net equals MA. Okay, now if you put these two together, you come up, end up with this equation. Now this is just uh, speed equals distance over time. So if I take this tennis ball and I go around like this, and if I know the radius of this string, or based from the center of the ball to where my right hand is, the speed is the, the circumference divided by time it takes to do one turn, one revolution. All right, um, okay, let's look at some applications of this. So the F net centripetal is mv squared over r. Now this is gonna change. There is no such a thing as a centripetal force. So in the case of the, the, uh, the tennis ball, the centripetal force is pretty much the tension in the string. Now, if I take this tennis ball and I go with a vertical circle, right? 
Now, <laughs> the centripetal acceleration is different. So when the ball is up here, you have the weight falling down, right? And the tension going up. Okay, I'm sorry, they're both falling down. The weight, the mg is falling down and the tension is also down. So your centripetal force is the sum of those two. When you are down here, you have the tension going up towards the center, okay, minus the mg, that's the centripetal force. Now, if you have a car that's, I have a picture here. If you have a car that's making a turn, let's say it's coming around this way, right? Making a curve, okay? The centripetal force is due to friction. And, and it's static friction because you don't want the car sliding out. So, this is the force of friction, static. Um, this is a, a ride that you have like in some amusement parks where you kind of like lean against the wall and they start to spin you and then the floor and the rear drops, okay? So in this case here, if you look at this free body diagram, the centripetal force is really the normal force. In other words, it's the push of the wall on you, okay? Um, we talked about this, we talked about this, right? So now let's look at an, uh, an application. Let's say you're going up to the second floor, right? And you're going up the first uh, steps, stairs, and then you have to make that 180 degree turn to go up to the other uh, stairs. So let's see when, when you can go fast, when you have to slow down. So the friction, is basically what's providing you with this centripetal force. And that's M V squared over R. Now, you really don't have anything to, you have no control over the FF, because FF is mu and G, and it's M V squared over R. So basically, it boils down to like the mass doesn't matter. And the coefficient of friction here is the is the, the friction between your shoes and the floor. G is a, given, is a fixed number. But you can play with these two things, okay? So you have two options. If you wanna go fast, meaning if you wanna increase this quantity, because this is fixed here. If you wanna go fast, you have to also increase your radius. So if you wanna go fast, you have to go wide. And you can do that in driving too. If you wanna go fast, you have to the radius has to be fixed. So you have to go to the outside. You see that in race cars. If you want to go narrow, meaning like if you want to make the angle small, not the angle, the, uh, the radius small, you have to slow down, okay? Now, when you're going up to the second floor, what you actually do, you don't just rely on this. You want to go fast, but also with a small radius. So what you do, you hold down to the rail. So now, you're not just relying on friction, but you're relying on the tension in your, in your arm. And that's pretty much centripetal force. Now, you're gonna see uh, that it's not as simple as it sounds, but because we, we'll do some problems and it's gonna keep changing. The problem with this is that this centripetal force is not a fixed force, it just keeps changing on us, all right? All right, uh, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna do some uh, special cases of uh, centripetal uh, or of circular motion. So now I have a, a tennis ball that I'm uh, whirling over my head, but in a horizontal circle, right? It's, it's impossible to get a horizontal circle, but let's just suppose that this circle here is horizontal. So let's look at the forces acting on the ball. So you're gonna have, just think of it this way. The circle is kind of like this, and the ball is here, right? This is a better picture than that. So you have your force of gravity acting down, and this is the center of that circle. This is kind of like in 3D. And you have a string attached to the tennis ball here. What's keeping the, te the tennis ball from going tangent to that circle, from escaping in other words, because it wants to go tangent all the time, is the tension in the string. So in this case here, so the mg does not play any role in the circular motion. So we can say that tension equals mv squared over r because your net centripetal force is the 
tension in, in this case. And you can solve from there. The next kind, I mean, the, the other type of, uh, uh, the other type of uh, circle motion I want to do is the, uh, which one? Vertical circle. Okay. So I'm going to do a vertical circle here. Let me just bring it up. Okay. There you go. So in this case here, you're not going horizontal, but you're going perpendicular to the ground, basically. Right? So you're going vertical. So I'm going to look at two cases. I'm going to look at the tennis ball at the bottom of that circle and at the top of the circle. So when you're at the top of the circle, you have your mg, force of gravity, and you have tension towards the center. When you're at the bottom, you have your mg down, and you have the tension <coughs> uh, up towards the center. So we're going to choose towards the center as positive all the time. So when you are at the top, you should be writing mg plus tension, that's what makes up your net centripetal force, equals mv squared over r. And you can solve that. So r being the radius of the, of the circle. When you are down here, it should say tension, because that's going towards the center, and towards the center is positive, minus the weight or the force of gravity equals mv squared over r. Now, a couple things we can a couple things we can uh, conclude from here. So, if I isolate the tension here at the bottom, it's going to be mg plus mv squared over r, and that's greater than mg. So the tension down here is greater than mg, and that should make some sense because the acceleration is towards the center. So the force that's going towards the center has to be greater than the force that's away from the center. Up here, I cannot tell. Because now if I isolate tension, I get negative mg plus mv squared over r. Okay. So here the tension can be greater than mg, it can be less than mg. But one thing is certain, the tension at the bottom will be greater than the tension at the top, okay? Uh, okay, so this, uh, the string is uh, more likely to break when the tennis ball is at the bottom because there's more tension on it than when it is at the top. Okay, the next case I want to look at is we're going we're gonna to look at a car going around the curve. And it's not going to be a banked curve, it's just going to be a flat surface. Okay. So we're going to be looking at this picture here. Okay. <coughs> okay. So in this picture here, you don't want the car to go sliding sideways because you want it to stay on this road here. So the center of that curvature is, let's say, somewhere in here. So this is the center. So the force that's not allowing the car to, to skid is the, uh, to go sideways, is the uh, force of friction. And that's static friction, not kinetic. Okay? So in this case here, we can write that the force of static friction is your centripetal force, or, or is your net centripetal force. <coughs> the Fn and the Mg play no role in the centripetal force because they are perpendicular to the radius of this curvature. And this is mv squared over r. We can do more with this. So uh, force of friction is coefficient of static friction times the normal force. That's mv squared over r. Now the normal force in this case here has to equal to the weight of the car, which is mg. And if we divide everything by the mass, we get this relationship between uh, V, mu, and R, okay? Uh, all right, the next thing I wanna do, I wanna talk about circular motion in um, roller coasters, right? So we're going to look at a roller coaster where the, the, uh, 
the cart is on the inside, right? Okay. So I'm going to look at two places. I'm going to look at it when they are up here and when it's down here at the bottom of the circle, okay? When it's up here, the forces acting on, on the cart here is uh, mg, and there's no tension here, but there is definitely a push back from the, the tracks. So that's your normal force. So here we can just, this is just like the tennis ball on a, ver in a, on a vertical circle. So this is gonna be mg plus fm is mv squared over r. And depending on what you have and what you ask to find, that's the equation you're gonna use. You figure out which, which isolate. Down here, you have your mg down and you have your fn up. And fn has to be bigger because your net centripetal force is towards the center. So fn has to be bigger than mg. And we can prove that with the math here. So fn minus mg is equal to m v squared over r. So if I add mg to both sides, I'll be looking at fn equals mg plus mv squared over r. So this is going to be greater than mg because this quantity here that I circled is positive. So you're always going to feel the heaviest when you are at the bottom of the, of the track, of the roller coaster, right? Here, you cannot tell. You, you might be lighter, you, you might feel lighter, you might feel heavier. It all depends on with what speed you're coming with. Because I can, uh, so Fn is negative mg plus mv squared over r. I don't know if this is greater than mg, or if it's less than mg, or if it's equal, I can't tell. It could also be equal, right? It all depends on this v. And all, of course, the, uh, the radius of the uh, curvature. Now, I'm going to do a case where, well, what happens if the, uh, the cart is on top? So if they're traveling on top here, okay? Okay, if they're traveling on top, the normal force is up, and the mg is towards the center. Now, we know that the net centripetal force is towards the center, right? So mg, in this case, has to be bigger than Fn, or Fn has to be smaller than F Mg. That's why on a ride like this, you're gonna feel lighter on the top, okay? So this is gonna be Mg minus Fn is Mv squared over R, <coughs> which means Fn is Mg minus Mv squared over R, which is definitely less than Mg, so that's why you feel lighter on top. Now here's another example of a uh, car. Uh, uh, okay, a car going uh, on a hill and in a dip. So here, it's kind of like the uh, the one I just talked about. Now, okay, so when the car is here. At this point here, the forces on it are, now let's just say this is a curvature here, right? That's part of a uh, circle. This is mg, and the fn is up, okay? The centripetal force is towards the center, which means mg has to be bigger than fn. Let's see if the, uh, the math supports that. So it's mg minus fn is mv squared over r. So if you wanna isolate fn, it should be mg minus mv squared over r, which is a positive quantity, which makes the whole thing less than mg. That's why if you're driving over a hill, you always feel, get that feeling that you feel lighter. You're not making good contact with the seat. Now let's look at it at the, at the bottom here, at this depression here. So this is part of a circle, okay? So the center of that circle, let's just say it's here, okay? It might be bigger, but Okay, so this is mg. At down here, the fn has to be bigger because the net force has to be directed towards the center. So the fn is towards the center, the mg is away from the center, so the fn has to be bigger. So let's see what the math shows. fn minus mg is mv squared over r. 
Now Fn is Mg plus something. That something is positive. So this is get definitely going to be greater than Mg. That's why at the bottom in that depression, you're going to feel that you, uh, you are heavier. Okay? All right. The last example I want to do is uh, a banked curve. Now you, you, you're making a turn, but not on a flat surface, but on an angled surface, right? So this is kind of like in 3D. So the car is going into the board, and it's going to come around like this, right? But it's going to do it on a banked road, not on a flat surface. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Now here you get the normal force, and just call it N. You have your, uh, you have your MG. And so we're going to try to see the relationship between the speed and the angle so that we can make this turn without relying on friction, period. All right. So I think we did in, when we did the incline planes, I showed you in the past that this angle here is the same as this angle here between this dotted line and mg. Now, the center of the circle is somewhere in here. It's along this line here. Okay. Just imagine it in 3D. So which means I have to break my forces so that at least part of the forces or co some components of the forces go towards the center. This is the center of the curvature. Okay. So I'm going to break the normal force. The normal force gets broken into an x component here and a y component here. And we can erase this later because we can't have the components on the free body diagram. Okay. Now if this angle here is theta, this also has to be the same. Those are uh, vertical angles, okay? Which is the same as this angle here. So now I can say that the x component of the normal force is the net centripetal force. That's what's providing the centripetal force. So that's my mv squared over r. Now if I look in that picture, this nx is, is the opposite from the angle in this triangle here. So I think I can write that as n sine of theta. Okay? Now let's look at, let's see what ha what's happening vertically. The car does not move up or down this way. So this ny, okay, the vertical component of the normal force is equal to mg because it's balanced, it's at rest in that direction, in other words. So ny is the adjacent side in that triangle. So that should be n cosine of the angle, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide these two equations in this direction. So when I do this, I'm going to get rid of n and m at the same time. So if I do this, I get tangent that angle equals, so if I do the division here, I should get v squared over gr, okay? And that's the relationship between the variables in this problem. So if you go in at this speed, as long as you respect this equation, you do not need friction to make the, uh, the turn because your centripetal force is not coming from friction in this case, it's coming from part of your normal force. And I think I covered, uh, covered all of the uh, examples or most of the examples. All right? All right, I'm out. Peace.